The bolalaika is a Russian string musical instrument with a characteristic triangular wooden, hollow body, fretted neck and three strings. Two strings are usually tuned to the same note and the third string is a perfect fourth higher. The higher pitched bolalaikas are used to play melodies and chords. The instrument generally has a short sustain, necessitating rapid strumming or plucking when it is used to play melodies. Bolalaikas are often used for Russian folk music and dancing. The bolalaika family of instruments includes instruments of various sizes, from the highest pitch to the lowest, the piccolo bolalaika, prima bolalaika, secunda bolalaika, alto bolalaika, bass bolalaika, and contrabass bolalaika. There are bolalaika orchestras which consist solely of different bolalaikas, these ensembles typically play classical music that has been arranged for bolalaikas. The prima bolalaika is the most common, the piccolo is rare. There have also been descant and tenor bolalaikas, but these are considered obsolete. All have three-sided bodies, spruce, evergreen, or fir tops, and backs made of three to nine wooden sections. The prima bolalaika, secunda and alto are played either with the fingers or a plectrum, depending on the music being played, and the bass and contrabass are played with leather plectra. The rare piccolo instrument is usually played with a pick. The earliest mention of the term bolalaika dates back to a 1688 Russian document. Another appearance of the word is registered in a document from Verhotursky district of Russia, dated October 1700. It also mentioned in a document signed by Peter the Great dated 1714 regarding wedding celebrations of N.M. Zotov in St. Petersburg. In Ukrainian language the word was first documented in the 18th century as balabaika, this form is also present in South Russian dialects and Belarusian language, as well in Siberian Russia. It made its way to literature and first appeared in Elizai, a 1771 poem by V. Makov. Bolalaika also appears in Nikolai Gogol's Dead Souls, written between 1837 and 1842. Secunda style contrabass style The most common solo instrument is the prima, which is tuned E4-E4-A4. E4, E4. Sometimes the bolalaika is tuned guitar style by folk musicians to G3B3D4. Whereby it is easier to play for Russian guitar players, although classically trained bolalaika purists avoid this tuning. It can also be tuned to E4A4D5, like its cousin, the domra, to make it easier for those trained on the domra to play the instrument, and still have a bolalaika sound. The folk tunings D4F sharp 4A4 and C4E4G4 were very popular, as this makes it easier to play certain riffs. Bolalaikas have been made in the following sizes, factory-made six-string prima bolalaikas with three sets of double courses are also common. These have three double courses similar to the stringing of the mandolin and often use a guitar tuning. Four-string alto bolalaikas are also encountered and are used in the orchestra of the Piatnisky folk choir. The piccolo, prima, and secunda bolalaikas were originally strung with gut with the thinnest melody string made of stainless steel. Today, Nylon strings are commonly used in place of gut. Amateur and or souvenir style prima bolalaikas usually have a total of 16 frets, while in professional orchestra like ones that number raises to 24. An important part of bolalaika technique is the use of the left thumb to fret notes on the lower string, particularly on the prima, where it is used to form chords. Traditionally, the side of the index finger of the right hand is used to sound notes on the prima, while a plectrum is used on the larger sizes. Because of the large size of the contrabass's strings, it is not uncommon to see players using plectra made from a leather shoe or boot heel. The bass bolalaika and contrabass bolalaika rest on the ground, on a wooden or metal pin that is drilled into one of its corners. Bolalaika postal stamps It is possible that the emergence and evolution of the bolalaika was a product of interaction with Asian Oriental cultures. In addition to European culture, early Russian states, also called Rus or Rusi, were also influenced by Oriental Asian cultures. Some theories say that the instrument is descended from the Domra, an instrument from the East Slavs. In the Caucasus, similar instruments such as the Mongolian Topshir, used in Kalmakia, and the Panduri used in Georgia are played. It is also similar to the Kazakh Dombra, which has two strings. Variants of the Dombra played by the Bashkirs often have three strings and may represent an instrument related to both the Dombra and the Balalaika. Early representations of the bolalaika show it with anywhere from two to six strings. Similarly, 
Frets on earlier balalaikas were made of animal gut and tied to the neck so that they could be moved around by the player at will. The first known document mentioning the instrument dates back to 1688. A guard's logbook from the Moscow Kremlin records that two commoners were stopped from playing the balalaika whilst drunk. Further documents from 1700 and 1714 also mention the instrument. In the early 18th century the term appeared in Ukrainian documents, where it sounded like balabaika. Bolalaika appeared in Elizai, a 1771 poem by V. Makov. In the 19th century, the bolalaika evolved into a triangular instrument with a neck that was substantially shorter than that of its Asian counterparts. It was popular as a village instrument for centuries, particularly with the skomaroks, sort of freelance musical gestures whose tunes ridiculed the Tsar, the Russian Orthodox Church, and Russian society in general. Bolalaika model of 1980 made for the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow in the 1880s, Vasily Vasilyevich Andreev, who was then a professional violinist in the music salons of St. Petersburg, developed what became the standardized Bolalaika, with the assistance of violin maker V. Ivanov. The instrument began to be used in his concert performances. A few years later, Street Petersburg craftsman Pasurbsky further refined the instruments by adding a fully chromatic set of frets and also a number of bolalaikas in orchestral sizes with the tunings now found in modern instruments. One of the reasons why the instruments were not standardized, was because people in the outlying areas built their own instruments because there was so little communication for them. There were no roads and weather conditions were generally bad. Andreev patented the design and arranged numerous traditional Russian folk melodies for the orchestra. He also composed a body of concert pieces for the instrument. Souvenir style The end result of Andreev's labors was the establishment of an orchestral folk tradition in Tsarist Russia, which later grew into a movement within the Soviet Union. The Bolalaika Orchestra in its full form consists of Bolalaikas, Dombras, Gusli, Vian, Vladimir Shepherd's Horns, Garmashkas and several types of percussion instruments. With the establishment of the Soviet system and the entrenchment of a proletarian cultural direction, the culture of the working classes was actively supported by the Soviet establishment. The concept of the Bolalaika Orchestra was adopted wholeheartedly by the Soviet government as something distinctively proletarian and was also deemed progressive. Significant amounts of energy and time were devoted to support and foster the formal study of the Bolalaika, from which highly skilled ensemble groups such as the Osipov State Russian Folk Orchestra emerged. Lolalaika virtuosi such as Boris Fyuktistov and Pavel Nekeparenko became stars both inside and outside the Soviet Union. The movement was so powerful that even the renowned Red Army Choir, which initially used a normal symphonic orchestra, changed its instrumentation, replacing violins, violas, and violoncellos with orchestral bolalaikas and damras. Painting from Nikolai Petrovich Petrov in 1861. The scene portrays the old Russian tradition of the bride show while a balalaika is played. Often musicians perform solo on the balalaika. In particular, Alexei Arkhipovsky is well known for his solo performances. In particular, he was invited to play at the opening ceremony of the second semi-final of the Eurovision Song Contest 2009 in Moscow because the organizers wanted to give a more Russian appearance to the contest. C category, Russian Bolalaika players and a larger one in Russian, 1911 advertisement for the Imperial Russian Bolalaika Orchestra and Victor Records through the 20th century. Interest in Russian folk instruments grew outside of Russia, likely as a result of Western tours by Andreev and other Bolalaika virtuosi early in the century. Significant Bolalaika associations are found in Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, New York, Atlanta, and Seattle. Thanks for watching.